evaluate the double integral where r is the region in the third quadrant between a circle of radius 1 and a circle of radius 3. So let's start by sketching this region. So again, let's make a note of our two bounding curves up here. So we can see that they are both circles, well, both quarter circles, because we're bounded in the third quadrant. And they're both quarter circles centered at the origin. And they have different radial lengths. So say our first bounding curve here that first curve has a radius of 1, and our second bounding curve here has a radius of 3. So let's go ahead and sketch this region. So we've got our y-axis and the x-axis. And if you have graphing paper at home, I'd encourage you to use it. I will try my best here. To sketch these circles. So we have a circle of radius 1 in quadrant 3. So here we say that's negative 1, negative 1, but don't be fooled. We know radius has to be positive. It's just the quadrant. And then we also have that this region is bounded by the circle of radius 3, or the quarter circle. So say right about there. Beautiful. And the region that we are considering is in between these two bounding curves. So we'll shade this in here. So this is our region of integration. So anytime you have a region of integration that is a circle or a portion of a circle, it's going to be convenient or more convenient to use polar coordinates. So just in looking at the circle, we can go right ahead and identify the bounds. So we want our radial bounds. So it's going to be these radial bounds are the bounds of, or the radius of the two circles. So we know our first circle has a radius of one, second circle has a radius of three. So this tells us that our radius r must be greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to three. And then for your theta bounds, The theta bounds are determined by the quadrant that your region is in. So we know that this is, again, bounded in the third quadrant. So we know that this is going to be from pi to 3 pi by 2. So those are the angle bounds of quadrant 3. So we can say that theta is greater than or equal to pi, less than or equal to 3 pi by 2. And so therefore, our region R is defined by the set of all ordered pairs R theta, where the radius is greater than or equal to 1, less than or equal to 3, and theta is greater than or equal to pi, less than or equal to 3 pi by 2. So we have our region of integration, which will give us our bounds. So we now need to go ahead and convert the function from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates. So we want to rewrite f in polar coordinates. So we were given the function f of x, y is y squared plus 3x. And so to convert this here, we'll keep in mind our conversion formulas. We know that y is equal to r times sine of theta. And we also know that x is equal to r times cosine of theta. So we are going to replace the x and y in this given function with these conversion formulas. So we can say that our function f in terms of r and theta is going to be r times sine of theta squared plus 3 multiplied by r times cosine of theta. And we can simplify here. So this becomes r squared sine of theta squared plus 
r cosine of theta. So we have our region of integration. We now have our function in polar coordinates. And we are ready to set up the double integral in polar coordinates. So we were given a double integral over r of our function f of x, which was y squared plus 3x dA. And we've converted this to polar coordinates. So I'm going to keep my theta bounds on the outside. So this is 3 pi, oops, shame on me. It should be pi to 3 pi by 2. The inner integral has the radial bounds 1 to 3. And then we have our function in polar coordinates, r squared times sine of theta squared plus 3 times the radius times cosine of theta. And then just be extra careful here that you remember your differential conversion, r dr d theta. And so I'm going to distribute my radius through to both terms here and then we'll be ready to integrate. So we can rewrite this double integral as the integral from pi to three pi over two, the integral from one to three, and our integrand is now r cubed sine of theta squared plus three r squared cosine of theta dr d theta. And so we can evaluate now, so I'm going to take my inner integral and evaluate this separately first. So we are evaluating the inner integral, which is with respect to the radius. So we have the integral from 1 to 3 of r cubed sine of theta squared plus 3r squared cosine of theta, d theta, and these are just general antiderivatives. So this integrates to, we can think of this as sine squared of theta multiplied by the radius to the fourth by four plus three times r cubed by three, so our threes cancel each other out, leaving us just with r cubed cosine of theta and we can now evaluate from one to three. So plugging in three first, we have sine squared of theta. Three to the fourth is 81, and that's all over four. Plus three cubed is 27 cosine of theta. And we are now subtracting the evaluation at one. So this is going to be sine squared of theta multiplied by one to the fourth is one, so that's all over four plus one cubed times cosine of theta just leaves us with cosine of theta. And so we want to combine up our like terms here so we can distribute this negative through to both terms. And we are left with, so I have sine, so actually let's rewrite this with 81 in the front. I have 81 sine squared of theta all over four plus 27 cosine of theta minus sine squared of theta by 4 minus cosine of theta. And we have like terms that we can group together or combine. And we need more room. So combining up our sine squared, we end up with 80 sine of theta squared all over 4, which we can simplify, plus 26 cosine of theta. And we, of course, know that 4 goes into 80 20 times. So I have 20 sine squared of theta plus 26 cosine of theta. Whew. So this is our inner integral. We're only halfway there, but we're not far now. So we want to take this and plug it back in. So we use this to 
evaluate the outer integral. And then perhaps you're looking at this and you're thinking, okay, well, cosine is an easy general antiderivative. We've got that, no problem. But we see we have a sine squared, which is not a general antiderivative. So before we plug this back in, I want you to recall the double angle formula, or excuse me, the half angle formula. They are equivalent. So the half angle formula is sine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus cosine of 2 theta by 2. So if we replace the sine squared in the inner integral here with this half angle formula, we avoid any substitutions or integration techniques. So let's do that now to prepare. So this becomes 20 multiplied by 1 minus cosine of 2 theta, all divided by 2, plus 26 cosine of theta. And we see that 2 goes into 20 10 times. And I'm going to distribute this 10 through to both terms here. And then we'll be ready to integrate. So this becomes 10 minus 10 cosine of 2 theta plus 26 cosine of theta. And so now we're ready to integrate without any unique situations. These are all general antiderivatives. And I know, well, in case you need reminders, remember, if the arguments of the trig functions are different, we cannot combine them. So don't be tempted. So we're ready. We're ready to evaluate that outer integral. Again, so we're plugging this back in. So this is now the integral from pi to 3 pi over 2 of the inner integral, which we just simplified to 10 minus 10 times cosine of 2 theta plus 26 cosine of theta. And we are ready to integrate. So making sure we have plenty of room. This becomes 10 theta minus, so this is 10 sine of 2 theta divided by 2. So we need to simplify. And this is plus 26 sine of theta from pi to 3 pi over 2. And so this leaves us with 10 theta minus 5 sine of 2 theta plus 26 sine of theta from pi to 3 pi over 2, and we're ready to evaluate. So plugging in 3 pi by 2, we are left with, so we have 10 times 3 pi by 2, which leaves us with 15 pi, and this is minus 5 times sine of 2 times 3 pi by 2, or just 3 pi, plus 26 sine of 3 pi by 2, and then we are subtracting the uh, antiderivative evaluated at pi. So this is 10 pi minus 5 times sine of 2 pi plus 26. Getting a little more room. Sine of pi. And we have some awesome evaluation here. Or excuse me, uh, simplification. We know that sine of pi by 3 goes to 0, sine of 3 pi by 2 goes to negative 1, sine of pi by 2 goes to 0, sine of pi goes to 0. And so we are left with 15 pi minus 26 minus 10 pi for a beautiful final answer of 5 pi minus 26.